Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts, Main Lube Lubricants, and your local Repco store. Hey, let's go fetch another Classic Resto. One with sparkling paint and chrome all full of shine. Hey, let's go fetch another Classic Resto. And show me what I wish was really mine. Hello and welcome to another episode of Classic Restos. Of course, not possible without the continued support of Shannon's Insurance, Main Lube Lubricants and your local Repco store across Australia and New Zealand as well. In fact, when it comes time for insurance, or if you just like to give them a call, pick up the phone and call Shannon's on 134646 for a quote. Not only can you pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call, but have you visited them online? They have a very comprehensive website, and while you're there, you can also sign up and become a member of the Shannon's Club. Visit Shannon's online at shannons.com.au. I encourage you to send an email to Main Lube Lubricants. What a company these people are. You can send away an oil sample from your engine, transmission, gearbox or diff for a full analysis. You'll receive a report from their laboratory. Then they can offer you a superior lubricant to protect your components. Give them a call via mainlube.com.au. Then, of course, there's your local Repco store. Yes, this is the place as soon as you walk through the door. You'll get that experience that's getting so hard to find these days. Whether you're a trade customer or a retail customer such as myself, you'll have access to an inventory of $50 million worth of more parts for more cars. Visit your local Repco store scattered across Australia and New Zealand. See them online at repco.com.au and repco.co.au. NZ. Classic Restos is about showcasing vehicles of yesteryear, interviewing the owners and helping to put events such as this on the map. On today's show, you'll see some of the fine work that the people have put together from the Werribee District Collectible Vehicles Club. It's another opportunity to get out of the house, come along to the paddock, see some magnificent vehicles and the people that own them. Time now to go take a closer look. Moving through, on today's show, I have been asked what significance there is with Pontiac and the Indian's head used as the emblem. Firstly, these cars were built back in the era where branding had meaning. This was further depicted by featuring embellishments of outstanding workmanship of the time, die-cast alloys, stainless steel. The Pontiac brand was named after the powerful Indian chief Pontiac, who was a strong leader from 1720 through to 1769. Vehicle branding. you got to love it. Back in the days when naming meant something. First cab off the rank today's show. How are you, Don? Oh, good, thanks, Fletch. That's the way, mate. We've got a pommy car. Look at this, and a stunning one as well. Humber, made by the Roots Group. Yes, that's right. Made by Roots Group in 1963. It's a Mark I uh, Humber Scepter, Mark I A. It's quite rare, only very few in Australia. Um, this is one I've actually been working on the last year. It's really nice, Don. I mean, I've got to say, it's one of the nicest dressed standard cars uh, from the UK that I've seen. And when you have a good look at it, it's easy to see why. First of all, I was taken by the profile of the car and the neat little fins out back. Then I was taken by the interior, uh, the style of the, uh, of the seats, and then onto the dashboard where there's a taco. There was a, you know, it's, it's a sporty but a styly car all wrapped up into one package. It's uh, brought out by Roots Group as, comp as competition in those days to introduce the sports version in their, in their range uh, versus to Hillman Hummer and, and Singer and those other, those other uh, products they were producing at, the, at that time. It's pretty stylish. It's got the, uh, the, low, uh, the low roof line, which is about two inches lower than the standard car, uh, the curved windshield uh, and the sports uh, instrumentation. Uh, the seats are different, individually uh, styled um, uh, seats in the front. Uh, with generally um, upmarket uh, appointments right through. It's good to see too a British car that hasn't skimped on the stainless steel and the bright work. There's plenty of that, Don. Plenty of it, yeah. The stainless steel is uh, they run a muck on. <laughs> uh, it's been uh, taken off and uh, dutifully um, uh, re uh, repolished and put back with new clips and everything. So it's uh, it's been a real eye to detail on that. It's great, Don. Uh, what sort of engine under the hood? What's going on there? Uh, 1592 uh, Roots Group motor uh, with an alloy head, um, twin, twin Zenith carbies. Uh, They've been completely reconditioned, uh, entirely original under the bonnet. Apart from that, um, including the paint, 
Uh, I haven't had to do much at all. It's only just really the exterior of the car that I've worked on quite intensely over the last few months. Good on you, Don. I mean, uh, you know, you're doing the UK proud, mate, with this Humber. It's a smart-looking car. Thanks for turning up to this smaller event today. And, uh, yeah, just good to no, catching up with great. you. Another little point I might want to add, which makes it a little bit different, it's uh, four on the floor with electric overdrive in third and fourth, which is very unusual. Yeah. Okay, so on that note, is third gear one-to-one one, and fourth the overdrive? Uh, both them overdrive. Oh, okay. So click in third and fourth. Yeah, okay. So, you know, as soon as you switch on the, uh, on the, on the uh, gear stick, yeah. uh, straight down. Yeah. So there's no problem. Certainly a nice advancement for the year. It was, yeah. For, uh, for England, it was quite well advanced yeah. for the type of car it is. Yeah. And uh, it, it's uh, quite unusual because in most people's perception they consider the fact that English cars are rudimentary and pretty crummy. But this particular car is, uh, shows difference to that, that's for sure. It was always intended to be something that would uh, make a step up and it was always intended to be a car that was pretty close to Jaguar. Yeah. Certainly one of the better ones, Don. Thanks again, buddy. Sure. Uh, good, good, Fletch. Nice to meet you. With me now, got this big guy. He's come up. How are you, mate? I'm good, thanks. What's your name? Jamie. Hey, Jamie. I'm Jamie, and I love classic Westos. <laughs> In the beauty. Good on you, buddy. Thanks, mate. That's okay. You too. right through. Fletch is a bit worried. Windy conditions. The wind's come up. He's going to lose his hat. How are you, Elio? Good, thank you very much. That's the way, mate. 1913 Model T Ford. Have a look at this. Now, mate, this is an outstanding car. Obviously, it's very old. It's probably the oldest car here. Give us the rundown. Well, it's a 1913 T Model Ford. I restored it 100% my, myself. The uh, When I first got it, it um, was practically a trolley load full of uh, bits and pieces. The, the original running gear, uh, mechanical it's all original. And you've got an iconic piece of uh, motoring history here. I mean, let's face it, I mean, the Model T, I mean, it really put cars on the map, didn't it? It has. The 1909 was the first T-Model Ford to 1927. But the, uh, the 13 was the first off the one of the uh, production lines, when the production line actually started. Or the t um, well, last year, uh, you Last year we went uh, for Classic Restos over to the Paquette building and uh, that was so awesome there. Uh, that was the very first building where these Model Ts were rolling out. And um, if you just would like to know as well, there is another tour happening in 2014 that I'm thinking about putting together as well. So um, there's actually some expressions of interest there. If you would like to do a Woodward tour in Detroit, send me an email. Give me your thoughts on that. Um, but Elio, having this car though, it's something that it's really, it's a preservation thing, isn't it? Because, I mean, it's so old, but it's in such good condition. It's, uh, what do you say about it? Well, I don't know how to put it. Um, I mean, like, mine wasn't as good as what, what they are now. I mean, these days, now, you, I mean, you, you restore something and you can, it's a little bit better than what they were in, in back in, in those days. Yep. I've restored it back in 1991. Yep. It's been on the road since. Wow. That's amazing. Well, mate, good on you, Elio. Thank you very much. You've certainly got a time capsule here. Thanks for turning up here today. Thanks, mate. No Thank you. Don't forget, when you get a moment, pick up the phone and give Shannon's Insurance a call on 134646 for a quote. Go to Westos. Go to Westos. All right, do it again and stop. Yeah. Don't stuff it up. All right. Go to Westos. Go to Classic Restos. Woo! <laughs> Hello Alina. Hi Fletch. How are you? Very well, thank you. That's good. Good to see you here today with your 1968 Cougar. These are a, these are a really styly Ford muscle car. There's not a hell of a lot of them around. Good to see you with one. Thank you. No, there's not a lot around, but we've sort of started to notice there's a lot more coming on the market. I don't know if people are realising, but... It's because of you. <laughs> you've started it. You've, you've, you're cornering the market. I don't know about that. No. So tell us, where does it go back with you, Helena? Where did you, what inspired you to go a Cougar? Okay, we started looking at Mustangs and we kind of thought, oh, there's a lot of Mustangs around. Let's get something that's kind of still a Ford, yeah. still a muscle car. Yeah. And then a good friend of mine actually found this car on the internet and it kind of started from there. Yeah. And then we um, rang the owner in LA and had a bit of discussion with him and he sent over all the photos, everything we wanted to know about the car because, you know, buying it over the internet's a little bit daunting. 
And then um, he sort of obliged us really well. And then my friend who knows a bit about cars said, yeah, it looks like a good clean car, not rusty. And we bought it and brought it over. How good is that? And you've kept it left hook as well. In my opinion, the only way to keep them. I don't do a conversion. It's just so good to see a traditional car, left-hand drive. Dashboards aren't butchered. Wiring isn't butchered. You've just left it original. It's just so cool. Yep, exactly. I love it. I love it. I love driving at left-hand drive. I thought it was a bit uncomfortable at first to start with, but a couple of drives and, yeah, she drives great. On that note, yeah, how, how does it drive? It, it feels good? Yeah, it's a big 390, big block. It's a big, strong motor, um, and she drives beautiful. It's power steering. Just drives great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, these are available. Plenty of them are available with 351s. I mean, what a score to get a 390. Yeah, I don't know if there's many GTs around, but, I've, but yeah, we're very lucky to have a 390 GT so clean. Yeah. Selena for catching up. It's great to see a lady with a nice car, a classic car, a muscle car. Well done. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Fletch. You're welcome. Well, Steve, that's the best ride I've had in a long time, mate. You did very well there, Fletch. Good, mate. Good. So, Fletch, you did well? Fletch, you did really well. Yeah. On level four, you did really, really well. Yeah. <laughs> till the end. <laughs> it's always good till the end. It is till the end. Mate, I tell you what, this job that you do, there's just no bull about it. Uh, it's a good good gig, good gig. And today we're actually uh, giving to Camp Quality all proceedings from the day, so it's worthwhile. Yeah, and that's exactly why I've done the interview. How good's this guy? Turns up here all day with his bull rider machine, donates his time and all proceeds off to charity. You're a good guy, mate. Thanks for turning up here today, eh? No worries at all. Thank you very much, Fletch. No worries, Steve. Before you do go, mate, what do you think of the car show here? Oh, I love the car show. I reckon it's a good year every year. And a um, few more people wouldn't, be, wouldn't go astray, but yeah. it's a good thing. Well, Werribee District, I think they've done a great show. I was on my way back home and I thought to myself, no, give myself an extra day, get on the plane tomorrow instead of today, come here and just support a little show like this. But you know what? It's not that little. The amount of cars over the back that have come in in the last hour, Steve, is quite surprising. You're stuck over here with the bull, mate. Correct, yeah. I'd like to get out and have a look again, so <laughs> I might have to go for a wander again. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Let's, you're a legend, mate. Cheers. Hey, look at this for a beautiful Falcon. How are you, Frank? Good. How are you, Fletch? Mate, good 1969 XT Falcon. Isn't this gorgeous? I believe so. Yeah. I think it is anyhow. Mate, being a 69 too, right on that transitional level there before the XW. Yeah. Well, that's why we chose it's mine and my brother's car. And uh, when we were looking for a car, we wanted something a little bit different. So everyone had XYs, XWs. Yeah. Yeah. There's not many XTs around. We came across this and snapped it up. Yeah. Made a beautiful example of a of an Australian Fairmont, gorgeous car. I mean, you know, it was a top level car back in its day. If you had one of these brand new, you would have been doing okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Look, having a look at others that haven't got a radio or heater, and you look at this top of the line heater, radio, carpet. You know, it was different to what you get at these days. It's top of the range, isn't it? Well, that's true. And in 1969, some refinements were starting to come about. I mean, 1969 cars started driving quite well. Well, this drives quite good. I mean, it's factory. Everything's factory on it. It's smooth. It's a cruiser. Yeah. That's all it is. Just yeah. a cruiser. Just stock standard. Frank, as I look inside there, mate, original interior as well with the perforated holes, just so synonymous with a lot of the cars from the 60s. Just so great to see. Beautiful condition, mate. It's been babied. Either that or you've done a sensational restoration. What's the deal there? The deal, it's all original seats, even original smell inside if you want to have a quick smell. It's well, you know, when Fletcher gets in a car, there's an original smell there sometimes too. Okay, fair enough. No, it's all original. The reason, it's a slight cut on the front seat, but we haven't touched it because the rest of it's all original. So I, I've, I tried to keep it as original as possible. So I think that's what keeps it as it is sort of thing, you know. How many years have you had the car, Frank? Uh, seven years now. Yeah. Yeah, my, my brother, Adrian's. Yeah. You're never going to sell it, are you? No, no. I've been offered plenty of times, plenty of money, but no. No, oh, we're going to keep it for life as long as we possibly can, you know. it's They don't come around too often. You love it, don't you? I do, yeah. It's one of those things that becomes like a, an extra limb, doesn't it? You know, it's a, a part of you. Yeah, well, look, people ask me, why have you got a car for? What, what does it do? You know, look, get in it. it. Just something about it that gives you, I don't know, freedom or just... 
Like, there's no other world, you know, worries in the world. It's just, you know, you get in, you drive, and you're just in a different planet, you know, it's something different. And it's funny, too, because sometimes the people that say, what do you got a car for, they're the people that sit in RSL clubs playing poker machines. So try and work that out. Exactly right. Like I said, look, look around you today, there's a lot of people with beautiful cars, and it just brings people together, and, you know, you get out and about, you meet nice people, and yeah. don't worry about the troubles in the world, you know. Frank, engine-wise, what's going on with the big girl, mate? Stock standard 302, mate, straight off the assembly line. Yeah, complete with the standard oil leaks and everything. Exactly. Oil, water, yeah. grease, it's all there, mate. Oh, little Windsor, eh? Beautiful little Windsor, yep, yeah. 302. Mate, they're a great little river. They're smooth. They're not bad on fuel in the standard form. What a great package. Fantastic package, mate. Can't get any better. Yeah, There's not you, many mate. of them around. Yeah, good on you, mate. And I've got a comment about your hat, too. Yeah, I love yours, too. It's not too bad. I might have to get a bit of a white stripe going yeah, too. Yeah. Black and white, good yeah, colour. Well, Frank, I've got to say, I was going to be frank with you and comment about your hat, mate. Very nice. Thanks, Fletch. I love yours too. The fine people at Shannon's Insurance, Main Lube Lubricants and your local Repco store are waiting to help you. Being through, talk about a cross-section of cars. How exciting is this? A 1972 XA Falcon panel van, the first one I've ever had on Classic Restos. Welcome to the show, Werner. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mate, 40 years you've had this. You're the original owner. How special is this? Very unusual. <laughs> There's not too many people who can say they got, bought a brand new car and it still looks like this. Well, it's a commercial vehicle, and as I've said a million times before, they, they were bashed and trashed a lot of the time. I mean, this is so well preserved. What I love about it, too, is just how plain it is. I mean, this is a base model car purchased for work. I mean, we've, we've got standard steel wheels with push on hubcaps. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a base model car. And to think that it looks so good 40 years on with one bloke. That's pretty good going. Well, we look after it. it the, the way I look at it is the car was making money for us and it was looking after it. It's a very reliable car to drive, so I look after it as well. Yeah. So if you look after it, it looks after you, right? The poor old XA used to get overlooked and, you know, from XY straight to XB. Uh, I like the XA. There's we something There's something about them. To be quite honest. At one <laughs> nearly bought a Holden. Yeah, yeah, we were looking at them, but uh, we decided the Falcon was to go. But we couldn't get, remember I mentioned before, we couldn't get the white one that we wanted. And they came up with this one and as an alternative, so we took it. I've got to say, the Falcons, they really do hang in there for high kilometres and, and longevity. They're a, they're a very good unit. Now, Werner, you've had an engine or a gearbox change, apparently. What's the story there? The problem was with, the, with my leg. <laughs> I had sciatica from my back, and it was a case of either sell the car. And a friend of mine who ran an automatic business said no. We'll convert it to an auto, then that'll fix your leg problem up. Oh, so you had a had a three on the tree originally, yeah, yeah, and the clutch was always giving me grief with the clutch. Yep. And so he converted it, and it just fitted straight in. And the engine needed to be changed anyway, so it was a 3.3. .3. Oh, little 200. Yep. Yeah. So we went to a 4.2 liter. 4.1. 250. 250. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, 4.1. Yeah. 250. And. It fitted in perfectly, yeah, yeah. straight in, change over, no yeah. problems at all. That's the beauty of the old cars too, you know, you could take a three on the tree out, put another column in, put a blank column in, you could put a, a T-bar auto in them, you could do that sort of stuff. And that's what we used to do, we'd take 250s out and put in 302s and 351s. and uh, to change it, but yeah. when he said that, uh, he said, well why sell it? He said, you've had it for 35 odd years then, that was about 10 years ago. What was your business? Like how come it's in such good nick? Were you, were you carting around bags of flour or no, something? No, no. No, paint, painting business. If you, oh, yeah, yeah. if you look in the back of the van, you'll see paint splatters on the yeah, wall, on the yeah, sides. Yeah. But they blend in with the original paint, you know, the splatter job on the yeah. sides. Very interesting, Werner. Thanks for your time, mate. Really good. Hey? Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Classic Restos. This is what it's all about. Take, for instance, this HR wagon here. Belongs to John Augusta. And his grandfather restored this car. That's what it means to these people. How awesome is that? Have a go at it. Beautiful. I've had a couple of emails, requests, people after some compact fair lanes on classic restos. Yeah, I'll admit, they don't come along all that often, but here's one here. Isn't it glorious? The compact fair lane. Hosting a 289 up front, an original interior. What a classy old car. Excellent show. Excellent show because guys like this turn up. Ian, welcome. Thank you very much, Rich. 1971 fair lane. This, this, look, I love them all. You know that. But, you know, there's... A special place in my heart for one of these it's just an iconic shape luxury car on the Australian market I guess synonymous with the same year of the GT Falcon what a gorgeous car tell us the story Ian well originally I ordered a GT Falcon but uh, my wife didn't like it so I had to uh, forego the GT and settle for the fair line so you've had this who owned this before you no, it's a brand new car from Dewey Ford 
You're it. You're the original owner. That's it. The original owner. <laughs> She's. I love that. I just think it's so good. So, what was it like when you brought the car home when it was brand new on the first day? Can you remember that? Oh, I can't really remember. I, I did trade a um, as Valiant in on it, but uh, you got rid of the Valiant. S series Valiant. I traded. An S series. Uh, yeah. Oh, but this was a family car. I'd take the kids to school and tow the race car to Sydney and places. Plus the S series. Well, it would have been what. Around 10 years old when you traded it? That's right, yeah. I'm well, not quite 10 years old. I was 63. So, yeah. Interesting time too when you ordered the Ford uh, with the V8 because a Windsor could have turned up or a Cleveland and obviously 351 Cleveland in this case. Yeah, the Clevelands were the uh, race engine at the time. They were the popular one, so that's why I ordered that one, yeah. And the interior is gorgeous. I mean, you've really looked after this car. When you got it brand new, was there plastic on the seats? Did it leave the dealership like that? Can you remember? I think it did actually. It's a long way back to remember, but I think you are right, yes. All right, Ian, what can you tell us about the paint colour, mate? What's the colour? It's called Teal Glow, and uh, it's a colour that my wife liked. She didn't like the red GT, so we changed that for a teal yeah. feel. Yeah. On, the con on the condition that I was allowed to order all the GT things, mirror, sunroof, T-bar, yep. exhaust and things like that. Did it worry you at the time to change the thought pattern to go from the high-performance car to the more sedate full-size luxury car? Not really because I was a drag racer and I had a drag car for the track only so this was more, more or less a family car and a tow car. Yeah. Good on you and thanks for sharing this with us because this is a family heirloom isn't it? I mean you mentioned to me uh, before 40 years ago or your wife had a baby at that stage I mean you know you've got you know a 40 year old child as well I mean you've done a lot in the time that you've had this car. That's right I've got my daughter and grandsons they're already lied to uh, take the car over and they, they want it now actually but yeah, yeah. they're not allowed to learn to drive in it just yet. Yeah. It's, 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 it's emotional for you mate isn't it this it car? Is, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yep. All right mate well it's great to catch up with you eh? isn't this good? A man and his car and family stories take care of yourself Ian eh? Thanks sorry for being emotional but yeah that's the way it is. That's all right mate I fully understand good. you've got a beautiful car and it's good to see that you're looking after it. Thanks Fletch no worries, very mate. good. Well here we go we got John Augusta now how are you John? Very good Fletch how are you? Good mate good look one of the main organizers of the event well done I thought I was in for a bit of a small show bigger than what I expected mate congratulations on that. Thank you very much uh, yeah we we probably got a few down now numbers this year usually we get a couple more cars but um, there's been a lot of shows in the area and we've got a very good turnout after many years of organizing this event yeah. we've got a good following so absolutely now John your club must have a website mate what are those details so people can get online find out more about your club here around Werribee yep our um, website is um, wdcvc.org if you do a, a search for wdcvc you, you'll find our website good on you John I'm always willing to support these clubs that start off small they get bigger and bigger each year and I mean as you say you've been going 15 16 years you're still Still growing, and and that's really exciting stuff, mate. And it's it's yourself and a whole group of people behind you as well that that make it happen. So well done. No worries, thanks, Fletch, and we appreciate shows like you who you know come up along and uh, do a little bit of a story and and show the grassroots of motorsport. These are the guys who actually appreciate what they're doing each weekend. Yes. So uh, we thank you as well. No worries, John. Just another day in the office for Fletchy, mate. Not a problem. <laughs> uh, good office, isn't it, Fletch? Yes. Not bad. I could think of worse, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, right. mate. Thanks, John. Well, there you go. What an episode, eh? Fletchy, classic restos. Last car left in the paddock, a Pontiac Parisian put on by the good people of the Werribee and District Collectible Vehicle Club. Now, classicrestos.com.au, that's the website that you need for the DVD boxed sets of the show. Classic Restos t-shirts, caps, stubby holders, finding out about travelling Route 66, and of course how my major sponsors are waiting to help you. As I say at the end of every episode, until next week, please, no matter where you're watching the show from, ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like Classic Restos on Facebook facebook.com forward slash classic restos tv and episodes can be seen at shannons.com.au well there goes another classic restos thanks for riding along with me for dvd sets and to contact the major sponsors go to classicrestos.com.au
Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts, Main Lube Lubricants, and your local Repco store.